Hello! Today we will be discussing iron deficiency anemia, including facts, pathophysiology, treatment, clinical manifestations, diagnostic studies. So make sure that you keep watching, but first make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. So always my disclaimer, this video is for educational purposes and is not intended to treat, diagnose, or it's not medical advice. Always follow the advice of your healthcare professional. This is purely for educational purposes. All right, let's start iron deficiency anemia. I did get a new computer, so hopefully the image is a little bit better in regards to the camera. Let's see, my old computer was 2012 and Catalina just crashed it. So iron deficiency anemia, that's what IDA stands for, facts and pathophysiology. It's the most common anemia in the world. The most common cause of iron deficiency anemia in premenopausal women is menorrhagia or excessive bleeding or pregnancy with inadequate supplementation. Most common cause of IDA in men and postmenopausal women is ulcers, gastritis, irritable bowel disease, or GI tumors. So the ideology is different if you are premenopausal versus postmenopausal. For young women, if you see this on an exam, it's most likely going to be the follow-up question should be, do you have heavy periods? What are your periods like? If it's mo if it's postmenopausal, then you're thinking, hmm, maybe something else is going on here. Other causes may include malabsorption due to gastrectomy or celiac disease. A lot of times they feel tired and that's why I put this bitmoji here because they're running on empty, they'll feel fatigued. Depending on the severity of the anemia, the manifestations will be different, right? Mild, you barely are going to have any symptoms. They may have some exertional dyspnea, some palpitations, or some mild fatigue. When it's moderate, they're going to start having cardiac symptoms such as a bounding pulse, increased palpitations, respiratory will be dyspnea, neurological will be roaring in the ears, and general will be fatigue. Now with severe anemia, they're going to have pallor, they're gonna have the pale conjunctiva, that's where you pull down on the eyes and you see that it's almost white. With the mouth, they're gonna have uh, an, in an inflamed tongue, a uh, smooth tongue, so a, a large, smooth tongue that's tender. With cardiac, they're going to have tachycardia, increased pulse pressure. It may lead to heart failure in severe patient, in severe cases, it may lead to heart failure, and they may have systolic murmurs. Respiratory, they may be breathing quickly. Um, they may feel out of breath when they're laying down. So positional dyspnea is orthopnea. That means if I lay down, I can't catch my breath and they may have dyspnea at rest. Neurological, they may have headache, vertigo, they may be irritable, depressed, have impaired cognition. That's why anybody that comes into, whether it's the hospital or your practice and they're complaining of depression or fatigue, we really wanna rule out medical causes first. Do they have anything going on that could be, for example, hypothyroidism or do they have low iron? Let's Let's make sure that that's not what it is and that it is true depression. With GI, they may have anorexia, hepatomegaly, splenomegaly, but again, this is not common. This is in severe cases. Musculoskeletal, they may feel bone pain. In general, they can be sensitive to cold. So when they test you, it will be on the sensitivity to cold, the fatigue, um, and the fact that they're going to be pale, the pallor. That's usually what is most tested on. What are the diagnostic studies? What does it look like? Iron deficiency anemia, the hemoglobin and hematocrit will be decreased. The MCV, which is the mean corpuscular volume, that is the size of the cell, right? Is the cell going to be large or is it going to be small? The size of the cell is going to be very itty bitty small. I think of it as a pale blue cell, right? Um, with iron deficiency anemia, not only is the size small, but the MCHC, which is the mean corpus corpuscular hemoglobin concentration, which I didn't put in here because it's a little bit more advanced, that would be more uh, the NP side, not so much nursing side of it. So with iron deficiency, the size is small and the MCHC is also going to be low. Everything pretty much in iron is low except for the total iron binding capacity. So if you can think to your brain like in iron everything is low, the size is low, it's a small pale cell, hemoglobin is low, serum iron is low, 
ferritin is your iron stores, that is low because I don't have any. The only thing that is high is because if I don't have something of something, right? If I don't if I don't have enough of something, my body is going to try to hold on to it at all costs. And that's what the total iron binding capacity means. It means we don't have enough iron, so I'm gonna hold it tightly. I'm gonna bind to it. If I get any little iron, I'm gonna bind to it so that I, I have it in my body and it doesn't go away. That's all that means, the total iron binding capacity. Um, think of this as like a clingy boyfriend or girlfriend. Like they're gonna cling to you. So C, T I B C, clingy boyfriend, right? Clingy boyfriend. They're clinging to you and um, they don't let you go. Now, if you have a lot of iron, so if you have a lot of iron in your body, your body's gonna be like, Psh, peh, you know, it's gonna be low, the total iron binding capacity, because it doesn't matter. Your body's like, oh, I got enough iron, I don't need you, so bye, bye, bye. I don't need to bind to you, right? So when iron is high, TIBC will be low, whereas the ferritin, that is the, your stores of iron. What are your stores of iron? What does it look like? And if those are low also, it means we, we are completely depleted. You don't have stores. Your MCV is low. That shows you that this is a true iron deficiency anemia. Based on your based on your CBC, you can tell a lot of information on what kind of anemia a patient has. Is it B12? Is it folate? And I've done a video on B12 and folate where in B12 and folate, the MCV is going to be a big fat cell, right? Sometimes they will do a stool occult blood test if you're in the hospital, sometimes a doctor may send it. Um, they will do an endoscopy and colonoscopy, that may be the next step. A GI doctor will do that and it may be used to detect GI bleeding. Treatment, right? If they don't have enough iron, what are we going to do? And if it's not because they're bleeding out, right? So this is a young girl and she is having heavy periods. Yes, she can talk to her gynecologist. Let's say she doesn't want to be put on birth control to regulate her periods. Well, we need to give her some iron. So oral iron should be used whenever possible, and it should continue to be used two to three months after hemoglobin is normal. So treatment, oral iron should be used whenever possible, two to three months after your hemoglobin is normal. Oral iron should be used whenever possible and it should continue to be used two to three months after your hemoglobin is normal. As the nurse, you wanna teach patient food sources of iron. Foods that are high in iron are liver, muscle meats, dried fruits, legumes, dark green leafy vegetables, beans, whole grains, and enriched bread. I myself am a vegan, I am not anemic, my iron is not low, and I survive pretty much on just the, um, I, I do eat legumes, I do eat dark green leafy vegetables, beans, whole grains, right? And you can always supplement with iron if you need to. If there's acute blood loss going on, then obviously we need to replace that. So they would be receiving packed RBCs. Iron is best absorbed in an acidic environment. So they should be taking it one hour before meals and or with orange juice or vitamin C. Now common sense, if they complain of nausea, then they can take it with food if it's gonna make them feel less nauseous but they should not take it with dairy or antacids because dairy inhibits the absorption of iron. So they need to take it with a glass of orange juice if we need to really maximize their absorption. And then the gastrointestinal side effects of iron may include heartburn, constipation, and black stools. So let them know that. If constipation occurs, patient can be started on stool softeners and laxatives if needed. And then iron can also be replaced IM or IV. If you're in the hospital, it looks really dark. Uh, you will see it if they're replacing it IV. And make sure you use the Z-Track method because it can stain the skin if you're doing it IM. So that's today's video. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for watching. Keep tuning in for more videos. So that you don't miss anything, hit that notification bell and hit the subscribe button. Have a great day. Iron. Foods that are higher in iron. Ugh.